another edition of Senior Showcase, College Edition, and I am honored to have Megan Osga joining us, a 2016 graduate of Prairie Ridge and now a 2020 graduate of? The University of Alabama. Uh, yeah, I just graduated with a major in psychology and a minor in biology. Nice. Yeah. Wait, wait a minute. I gotta realize I don't have I don't have my crimson tide hat. Okay. <laughs> there you go. All right, there we go. <laughs> there we go. Okay, so now we're all good. Yeah. So uh wait a minute. So you well share a little bit about yourself, what groups you've been involved in while you've been down in Alabama and kind of your academic progression and then we'll just kind of go from there. Okay. Um well so when I got there I joined a sorority. 80 Pi, um, so that's been like my big involvement here, um, pretty much all around on campus. Um, and then I was just in um, Caring for Camo and uh, Pre-Dental Society and then just some honor societies too. So that's like, pretty much what I was involved in. Um, but I, I majored in psychology with a minor in biology, and but I'm on the pre-dental track, so I'm hoping to go to dental school someday but next year I'm going to get my master's in biomedical sciences so yeah. Jeez. I'm just I'm just amazed at all the intellectual firepower I've been around as, as I've been talking to people so that's so that's impressive so well first what when you were back in in high school tell me you know, share with everyone kind of your process of what you went through to decide where you want to go and, and how you ended up uh, at the University of Alabama. Yeah, well, um, I'd always been an Notre Dame fan, so, like, I thought I wanted to go there. And then my mom made me try look at a bunch of schools. Um, and I visited Auburn, actually, and really liked it. And someone we were um, touring with was like, if you like it here, you should go look at Alabama. And so I did. And I loved it, literally applied in the airport. And my mom was like, well, I guess I lost her. Like, I guess she, she wants to go somewhere else. So, um, yeah, and I've loved it so much. It's just been such – it was scary to go far away, but it was such an awesome change. And it's definitely nice to be quarantined in warm weather versus up north in Chicago. So. That, that's for sure. So the one thing – and – and obviously, having gone through, you know, the introduction of Greek life on the boys' side, I was amazed what we didn't know, especially in the SEC and especially at the University of Alabama. Tell everyone a little bit about what that whole process is like, because to be honest, what the ladies go through to me is just insanity. But, you know, if there's people out there that have interest in getting into the Greek life and sorority, walk us through that, that, yeah. that chaos that happens in the summer. <laughs> uh, yeah, so, it's crazy. And especially my year was crazy. So we always joke about how it's like really ironic that we ended um, on such a crazy note because we actually started on a crazy note. So our recruitment is about a week and a half. For the new girls coming in, it's only a week and a half. But for people that are already in it, um, it's like two to two and a half weeks of stuff that we have to do. Um, but basically, you go through, you have um, your full days um, of recruitment every day, like in the heat because you're outside all day. So that's like, that was definitely hard because that was my first experience down in Alabama was in the heat all day, every day. And we had terrible storms. It was like Alabama gets bad storms, but we had it so, so bad. Um, and we actually ended up, we were supposed to, basically we have, there's, oh gosh, open house, like the uh, sisterhood and prep. So we have four rounds. The first three are two two days each. And then the last one is just one day. And now, when, did, when did these take place? Just to stop you, when did these take place um, in the school year? Uh, not, it's before school starts. So. Okay beginning yeah. of August yeah and um so then we have two day, two days for the first round and then one day for the last one and then the last day is bid day and it's supposed to be in the stadium and it's like the most exciting day and everything and ours got we literally had so many issues with weather and stuff and then actually so like there's a whole voting system that you have to go through and the computers got messed up and messed everything up so our um, bid day was late and so 
obviously Saban gets control of the stadium and they had a scrimmage. So we got kicked out of the stadium for our bid day and we got put in a parking garage. Um, so we, we had our bid day in a parking garage. And so we just think it's funny that we also didn't get to graduate like normally either. Um, but it was a crazy, crazy experience. Um, but I met so many people going through it and I definitely didn't know what I was getting into, um, because sororities down here are super different than the North. Um, and I really had no idea about any of the houses, um, here, but I like, I did not know what house I wanted to go when I came here and I did not think it was going to be 80 pie, but like after the, the last two rounds, I thought it was going to be 80 pie. Um, and then I did, I went through that, but it's so funny because the boys just ha like, they have such a different experience than us going through. Like we are all so stressed out and like all this stuff. And then when you're in the house, it's, I love, loved being well so I was in the house one year and then I was a recruitment counselor for the last two years um so I loved being in the house because you like actually like everyone when you go through recruitment they're like oh like I could just I don't think you fit here like and you're like why I think I fit here or like or like I could like you literally can look at a girl you can talk to her, like oh she definitely is going to be this and then she'll end up like going that probably and so it's really cool to like meet the girls and, and like you actually see like oh I actually know if they like sh should be in our house or not and it's like it's very cool to actually like once you're a part of it and like especially like you understand like all the houses once you're in it um so you know where people like kind of fit in um but then the last two years I was a recruitment counselor which I loved um, so basically I got to help all the, um, potential new members like throughout the whole week and just sit outside with them and like talk them through it. And like a lot of people cry during recruitment. So like I was just there while they were crying and like, it was like, it's so fun. I love like helping people out through the process because like I would not have met all my best friends, um, if it, if, if I wasn't in 80 pie. So I definitely always want, like, I'm always like telling people to join because I like, it's, People make fun of us for it, but it's the best way to make friends here. And it's, like, the same – you meet people that, like, have similar backgrounds as you and everything. So, like, it's an easy way to, like, find the people that you should be friends with anyways. So, so yeah. what was – what what really was the driving force for you out of high school to decide I wanted to do sororities? Was it just because as you studied Alabama, you realized – now, what's the percentage – because I believe the girls is a much higher percentage. What's the percentage of girls at Alabama that are in a sorority? Uh, girls is like maybe 60%, I think. Okay. I don't know. I don't know if that's right. I could be making that up. But, <laughs> um, I mean, I honestly, like, like, I've never had a sibling. So for me, I've always like wanted a sister and like, sounds super cliche so I really wanted like that was another like big driving point and like I just like when I came down like you've seen all the like houses there like how could you not want to like be a part of that so I don't know I just I really wanted to try it out and then I loved it and I mean it just like like uh, so grateful because we were fed meals every single day and now once like we got kicked out, like not kicked out of the house, but we weren't able to go to the house anymore. I was like, wait, I have to cook for myself. I don't know how to do that. Like, <laughs> and I, like, and I will, and I will, for anyone that has not, I, I guarantee you, you at look on YouTube, Alabama sorority houses, just to get a picture. And I know there's even some YouTube videos on, uh, almost like sorority cribs or whatever that are out there. And you will just be blown away at these palatial estates. And they really are. Yeah. They really are. The guys' ones look tremendous. Now, obviously, yeah. on the inside, we know they're touching <laughs> some of them. But never being inside or seeing one of them, I know that they're pretty palatial, what you guys live in. And it's pretty nice. Yeah, definitely. Uh, so, okay. So that was a huge part. You kind of met your sisters. You lived in, in regular dorms, right, when you first came down there? Yeah, I lived in Prez, so, which I loved. <laughs> now, what, what's, what's Prez, so everyone knows? Um, we, there's four bedrooms, two bathrooms, a little living room area, and, like, a kitchenette area. It's amazing. <laughs> My parents yeah. are so mad. <laughs> I know. I know. What, now, how did you connect with your roommates? What was that process like? What did you do? Um, one of them I knew from, um, 
uh, volleyball at home, not from PR, but from Fusion. Um, and then we both found one other one, and then we just all four lived together. Okay. What's, what's that through Facebook? Through Yeah, we just were on like this, like the Facebook page and found people. Okay. So from what made you pick your line of study? Um, well, I knew I wanted to be medical for a long time, but I didn't know what, like, I didn't really think I wanted to be a doctor, so I didn't really know what to do. Um, and then when I had my braces, I became very interested in orthodontia, but I'm not really interested in that track of it anymore. Um, but I just like realized like dental is like really cool because I want to be a mom someday and I want to be able to not have to work full time necessarily when I'm a mom. So you can pick your hours so well with that. Um, and I think like I'm a very outgoing person and like you have to be kind of outgoing for that job. So I just felt like it fit me well. Great. So tell me kind of how you handled the stress, obviously, of, of sorority life and the social part with the stress of, I mean, you, I mean, you were in a very challenging major. So, so you're biology, right? Um, psycho but psychology with biology minor, but I had to take all the prerequisites for dental school. So, yep. Yeah. Yep. So, so t how'd you make that balance? How did you handle that? Especially your freshman year? Yeah, it was definitely hard freshman year um, trying to figure it out. Um, the nice thing was so many of my friends actually had like very hard majors too, and they were like engineering and stuff like that. Um, so I wasn't necessarily like nursing um, and I wasn't, so I wasn't necessarily alone in that, but I mean, freshman year, the sororities have so many activities for you and you definitely have to learn, like, like I learned fast that I had to make a schedule and stick to that um, because I wanted to do everything and I realized that I couldn't necessarily do everything um, if I didn't plan things out right. So like definitely learned in like Chem 101 and whatnot that like, okay, I actually, you, you know, it's different in high school, you study, like, maybe the period before <laughs> your test, and you're fine. Um, <laughs> in college, um, especially for a lot of tests, you're studying a week or more in advance. Um, and so that's something you definitely have to get used to. Um, but there's a learning curve with that. And I think a lot of freshman professors were super, super helpful with that. Um, and just like, wanted to they wanted to see you succeed um and they like a lot of freshman classes had like drop tests and stuff because they know that you're probably gonna mess up at some point as a freshman so um that was nice and it's definitely helped me so that because I know I'm gonna have to have a lot of time management um when I get my master's in biomedical sciences um so I'm definitely it's nice to have that background and understand like the um ability to manage everything and like but still have like a lot of fun and be able to go and do all the things I want to do so so you weren't necessarily sleeping until one in the afternoon rolling out no. of bed and and no. you kind of had some structure to to your day. oh yeah no. I didn't I didn't really sleep in that I don't really sleep in that much even now um I mean, I don't know if my parents would believe me, but <laughs> I do get up pretty early. <laughs> I usually get up by like 9, 9.30. <laughs> so tell me, tell me from a social aspect, what, what were some of your fondest and funnest memories at, at Alabama? And what were some of the fun things that you and your sisters and classmates would do? Yeah. Well, my number one memory of all time is the national championship that was like the best night ever I mean just like running down the strip and there's like police officers high-fiving everyone and at, like literally like the whole school that was there was just on the same street just like we just won the national championship and it was the coolest thing and I mean overall football games in general the best time but now um, what, my, how, what's the sorority routine for, fo for football games, for tailgating um, or whatever you guys do? Uh, get up early, especially if it's an 11 a.m. game. <laughs> it's the worst. <laughs> um, but you got to get up early and get ready because um, we don't dress like we did uh, for PR football games. We actually, like, 
look nice and stuff. Um, so what, know, is that, really what does that mean? Describe that to someone who has not been to an SCC or South or football game in the South, how the ladies dress for those games. Um, well, we usually wear like a skirt um, or dress or romper um, and like heels. And then we always have like our pins that say our sorority, like 80 pie loves the tide and like whatever other pins we want. Like everyone's always wearing pins there. Um, and then we have our shakers. Um, so yeah, it's super, super different look than up north. Um, but so we get up early, um, we all meet up somewhere. Um, usually if you live like further from campus, you go and park closer to like people that can, live walking distance and then um, sororities always have meals on game days, so we usually walk there on our way to the quad before we go tailgate. Now, what's what's the quad for people that don't know what that is? Um, just the we have a couple of quads, but our main quad is just the main like green grass area um, in the middle of a bunch of our academic buildings. And on game days, it's filled with tents. Um, I mean, some people's tailgates are crazy, but like so nice but <laughs> yeah it's a, it's the best time <laughs> yeah people are like catering in like fine food crab rangoon filet mignon sandwiches yeah. some like that <laughs> not 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 the typical student but but some people are yes exactly it's crazy but it's so fun now once you go into the stadium what are some kind of cool traditions that you enjoy during during the game well, we got Dixieland Delight back. That's 100% like my favorite one. And the, not the last game, but the last night game that we had, um, I think it might have actually been LSU was our last night game. Um, it was the most fun Dixieland delight ever especially because we got these new led lights um so so fun but i just feel like everyone there is so into the game which i love um and like people are always cheering i mean people always say don't you guys get bored of the games and i mean sometimes we do leave early but it's it's the best time ever and i can't imagine not having a school that like with this amazing football like now, do all do all the sororities sit together? Do they sit with the student body? How's that structured at the games? So there's block seating, um, and tip. There's a couple of sororities that choose to do block seating, but not all sororities choose to do it. Um, but a lot of fraternities do it. So usually you sit with your friends in fraternities, because um, they'll because basically block seating is like each organization that signs up for it um, has like a specific row of seats that are uh, closed off until 30 minutes before game time so you can go and sit in them. Um, and so, yeah, we have to get to the games kind of early, especially when Trump comes to our games. Um. <laughs> yeah, what was, what was that experience like? If you want to share when, when President Trump came this past yeah. year to the LSU game and all the pomp and circumstance of one against two or one against three, whatever it was back then, what, what was that experience like for you on campus? Yeah, it was crazy. Um, even the week leading up to it, we saw um, Secret Service agents everywhere, um, which is like, which was really weird. And <laughs> we were just like, what's going on? Um, but so we got there super early. I'm trying to think probably like an hour and a half before the game, like because we were told we had to get in like by an hour before the game or something, because um, if he was in before us, we weren't allowed in or something like that. Um, so it was definitely strict, but not as strict as I thought it would be. Um, but there was secret service agents everywhere. And usually we just have security that like, go, let's go through the metal detectors, but we had to like have a secret security agent, like secret service agent pat us down, um, at the game. And it was really cool. I mean, um, to like have him there and whatnot, uh, it was an interesting experience just seeing like the way that people reacted to it. But um, I don't know. It's cool that the president wants to come to your school. Like that means that you must have a pretty cool program if the president wants to come watch football game at your school. So. And, and obviously the game didn't end as, as Bama folks hope, but it, everyone still speaks to just oh, what an awesome. It was, 
it was honestly probably one of the best games I've been, even though we lost it was probably one of the best games I've been to like the oh it was and everyone was there till the last second of that game like 100 percent now you brought up LED lights can you explain what you mean by that to people yeah we have we just got these new um red and white LED lights at the top of our stadium and so once it starts getting dark, um, when they play, because they're always playing music, and it's, like, always really loud in there, um, they just, like, flash them everywhere, and it just, like, makes the experience, like, everyone gets so much more into it when, like, those lights are on and whatnot, so it's so, so fun, and, like, even the players get super, super into it when that happens, so. Now, what was, uh, if, if you could explain to people the reference to Dixieland Delight and what that is, because yeah. I had no idea what that was until I kind of got part of the Crimson Tide culture. Yeah, it's just um, one of our really big songs. Um, it's a very Southern song that we play. Um, we add in our own words here and there um, throughout this that, song. That probably aren't very appropriate and speak ill of fellow teams, right? Yeah, but the, but to, so the reason we got it taken away is because the student section was a little too loud with those words. Um, but they just decided to blast in some music that says the what they want us to say when we do it, so that now it's fine and they don't really care anymore. So it's the most fun time ever because everyone knows the lyrics. Everyone's like bouncing, like jumping up and down on the bleachers. Like the whole stadium, like student section shaking. It's so fun. Got it. What are, uh, give a little flavor of the town of Tuscaloosa, kind of how it's laid out, you know, obviously your junior and senior year, you would, the, the whole, all the bars and restaurants would be fully open up to you since you're old enough. Uh, ex explain all that and, and the layout. Um, so I love the campus because it's not really a driving campus. Like you can drive around, but like Pretty much when students are on campus, most of the main roads are only open to the bus system. Um, so you can walk, everyone just walks like everywhere on campus. Um, I drive to get, I live a little bit off campus, so I drive to get to school, but then I walk everywhere throughout the day, um, walk to my sorority house, get food um, and whatnot. So everything is like academic buildings in one area and then sorority, fraternity buildings over here, sorority over here, and then the stadium's over here. And then if you go a little bit past the stadium, that's where all like the bars and restaurants are and like so everything is very much like walking distance um close to each other which is like something that I really loved and it, I feel like it makes like the town feel smaller and like more close-knit like I never wanted to be like in a real, real city area so that's now what 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 were your, some of your favorite hangouts uh specifically if someone out there is looking to come to Tuscaloosa what were the hangouts that as a junior and senior you're like these these were my must go to places um i like um innisfree um galette um bear trap and on thursday mo's what what why mo's on thursday what goes on they there? have a, they have like a special deal on thursdays um and uh and this is not the most. This is not the most that people are familiar with with the with the Mexican food up here. It's no, it's Mo's, It's called Mo's Original Barbecue. Got it. Okay. Um, and so it's barbecue during the day, and then at night it's a bar. But um, they that's like their big night. Like people aren't really there on any other night, but it's packed on Thursdays, and everyone goes there on Thursdays. So that's really really fun. Um, I love Mo's. But um, yeah, then Innisfree is like more of an Irish pub. It's fun and it's like you can sit outside there. Galette's is fun. It's close to the stadium. Um, and then Bear Trap's like a rooftop kind of thing. So yeah. Now what, what are some of your favorite restaurants where you're just now, you're going to look back and go, man, I wish I could have that from there. Yeah. Um, Taco Mama, so good. Um, and then... I love Moe's barbecue too. Um, and then uh, Buffalo Phil's. Buffalo Phil's? Yeah. Or is that wings? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Now, I like, I like Chuck's when my parents are in town. <laughs> you're like, oh, okay. You like a nice steakhouse when your parents are in town. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> now, what, what are, um, and again, you know, we're, we're talking about kind of the fun times and when you, where you'd go out, but typically during the week, what, what were some other things, what was your week generally like when you were on campus? 
Um, well, just, well, this semester I had it really nice because I only had class Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. But, um, I mean, every day I'd wake up, some, depending on when my classes were out, I'd sometimes go to breakfast at the house. Um, I'd go to my classes, lunch at the house, classes, dinner at the house. And then I'd usually just hang out at the house um, with my friends just for a while, do some homework, um, and then, like, go to the gym or something after that so now yeah. is the is is the the gym or the rec is that a, a spot that a lot of people went to or yeah definitely I mean some people go to off-campus gyms um but I just chose not to pay extra um for that <laughs> but no, why not it was still a nice gym yeah and so I could go visit Miko at the gym obviously that's why I went <laughs> there, there, you there you go um the, the the schoolwork was was obviously a challenge for you. So I don't I don't I mean not for you. You got through it. You did it. But it definitely wasn't. I think the misconception a lot of people when they first hear of Alabama is not understanding kind of what how they're striving and people say what you want about the football program. All the money that the football program has gone in has directly affected you as a student, my son as a student, other people as a student. Talk about that and what you've seen happen to the academic standards as well at Alabama. Yeah, I mean, that's definitely another huge reason why I came um, here because I knew I wanted to go to grad school. Um, and so we had these awesome merit scholarships. So um, I had a full ride to come here. Um, and that's because of football literally <laughs> but um and that I know very few people that aren't on any sort of um scholarship here pretty much everyone is um and yeah I think a lot of people think that Alabama doesn't have good academics um but pretty much all my friends are in um engineering nursing um some sort of science even our business programs are really really good um I have a bunch of friends in accounting um and they're doing like awesome things and we have really good um paths to master's programs here unfortunately they don't have the master's program i want here because everyone's like oh are you staying at alabama i'm like i wish i could but they don't have what i want but um no i think that um everyone is challenged here um no matter what major you have and they are always redoing our buildings um there's not a there's not a building on campus that hasn't been renovated in the last seven years um that's like the longest one's been there's they're always doing new things for us to try and improve um and and that really does come a lot from the athletics that the school has i mean there's there's no other explanation for the amount of money that they give away just in merit scholarships i mean i didn't have to do anything i just sent in my scores i didn't have to write any anything have an interview for it so that's pretty like amazing and I think that a lot of people either don't know about or just uh, don't like I don't know just don't take advantage of got it. Let, let's talk let's talk about kind of your your goals and and what you want to do so you, you're coming out you graduate in four years walk us through kind of your next steps and ultimately where you're heading with it so I didn't really I wasn't planning on staying the summer um, but with everything that's kind of going on, um, I have decided to stay until I'm done. And I just like also realized I wasn't ready to leave here just yet. Um, so um, I'm actually studying for the dental admission test this summer. Um, taking it, I was supposed to take it in June, but everything's pushed back. So I'm taking it in July now. Um, but I'm staying here till the end of July and then I'll move back move all my stuff back to Chicago. Um, and then my parents helped me do the 29 hour drive <laughs> to Arizona um, sometime in mid August. Um, and then I'll start my master's in biomedical. So also this summer I'm applying to dental school. Um, I'll put my application in. Um, and so I'll start my master's program, a uh, nine month program, uh, finish up in June. I'll graduate from that in June. And, and then What's that involve and where is it going to be located? Yeah, so it's um, at Midwestern University um, in Glendale, Arizona, um, which is a professional um, grad school. Um, so basically, uh, it's taking some pretty much a similar, almost all the same classes that I would be taking um, 
as my first year in dental school. Um, so it'll get me um, that jump start um, and that extra thing on my application um, that'll show I can like handle these classes. And then when I actually start dental school, it'll make those classes like a lot easier for me. So basically that's what I'm doing this first year. Um, it's, it's a school that, so I like the, one of the dental schools that I'm looking at is Midwestern. And so um, I'll actually get to know, I'll have the same professors that I would have if I were to stay there and all that stuff. So that's really cool. Um, and that, so that's three quarters and it finishes up in June. And then hopefully my plan is to start um, dental school in August. Next now, August. If there was a dream dental school, where would it be? Midwestern in Arizona. Okay. Okay, so you, I, I, I am gathering here that you are a warm body person yes. from Tuscaloosa to Phoenix to get ready for the monsoon season in August. That's what people, I went to school in Arizona and people don't realize that August yeah. is monsoon season down there. So <laughs> you get that same big raindrops that you've gotten in, yeah. in Tuscaloosa there. Yeah, I definitely want to stay warm weather now that I'm so used to it. I don't know if I can really picture myself um, going back to cold. I mean, if that's where dental school leads me, then I'll go there. But um, I know I you're breaking your parents' hearts right now, or either you're going to convince them. I know. To I know, but the, I'm like, you can come visit me. <laughs> now, talk about the people around you on campus, all your friends. Where are they from? Is it Alabama, Illinois? Where's everyone from? Yeah, that everywhere. Um, Alabama, Georgia, Illinois, Missouri, Massachusetts, um, where else? Tennessee, Oklahoma, um, California, uh, North Carolina, Texas, I, everywhere. You know anyone from Alabama? <laughs> yes, yes. My friend, one of my friends, actually, one of my best friends is from Auburn. Actually, I have two, two really good friends from Alabama. But, you mean yeah. from the, the city of Auburn? Yes. Boy, that must have been hard for her to go to Alabama then growing her up. Her right whole there. family went to Alabama, but they're all from Auburn. <laughs> Talk about that rivalry a little bit for people that don't understand. Yeah, it. uh, well, yeah it's definitely a Compare it to anything? Um, compare it to, if I were to compare it to a Crystal Lake rivalry, I would compare it to PR and Central probably, or PR and Cary Grove. Um, either one um, but it's more than that I don't know it's people that we do not like each other on the other side of the state um, but I do have friends that go to Auburn and like I like them as people but <laughs> we when we play each other in sports it's not a friendly rivalry and I was in Auburn for the Iron Bowl and that was not fun <laughs> So do you usually miss Thanksgiving at home or how do you handle that? Cause that game's always Thanksgiving weekend. Yes. Um, I went home every year actually. Um, I usually just fly back the Friday after. So I'm only home for a very short amount of time. Got it. Yeah. Um, who are, if you look back at your time at Alabama, who are some of the, are there faculty administrators, other people from the university that have just made a huge impact on you? Yeah. Um, I have two faculty that probably made the biggest impact on me. One was um, an honors class that I took that was issues in healthcare, um, and that was um, Dr. Horton Grammer, and she is a nurse, um, actually, but she's also a nursing professor in Alabama, um, and she just she just cares a lot and she was like the type of person that she shared her whole life with us um and i really appreciated that um because she like she made us just feel very comfortable in the classroom and we were able to like really talk about anything and it was a very small class and then the same with one of my uh lit professors um dr cardone she was awesome we had a small class and um she just made it like a very easy environment because like a small class on a big campus most people don't know each other they're not friends um so uh she they they both made it really easy for like everyone to be friends and comfortable with each other um and be successful in the class so yeah great now if you reflect back on your time at prairie ridge 
Uh, briefly share with people, what were you involved in at, at Prairie Ridge when you were there? Yeah, um, I played volleyball. So uh, I played softball freshman year, but I played volleyball all four years. Um, and that was pretty much the biggest part of my life in high school. Um, just always playing volleyball, um, whether it was for PR or for clubs. So, um, yeah, that's that's what I did pretty big at PR. So Now, how do you feel Prairie Ridge prepared you for your next step? Um, they definitely prepared us really well. Um, I'll tell you that some people do not come from as strong of a background of school and just like, for example, like writing papers and stuff. Um, the papers that I, like I was able to start papers and write papers very easily. And, um, some people just didn't even know how to write a thesis statement. And it's just like crazy. Um, we were held to a high standard there that we didn't really know we were held to. So um, that was cool to see that when I came here. Um, that I mean, not everyone, but people that come from um, certain areas just weren't didn't have as good of a background as we did. So sure. Now, if you if if you think back to faculty or administrators at PR, any of them that you look back on, they go, "Man, they just had a huge impact on my life." Yeah. Oh yeah. Um, <laughs> there's so many that like. We were so close. I was so close with a lot of um, teachers there. So like Wads, both the Tagies, um, Otto was my coach and my teacher. Um, oh, who, uh, Mr. Card. Um, I don't think he's still there anymore, but Mr. Zier, um, just Mr. Powell. So like there's so many people that um, made such a difference at PR. Um, and I feel like our teachers were so close um, with their students and it made like me love PR so much more. So. Is there any, anyone you kind of, when you come back to Chicago, if you have time, are there certain teachers, are you able to kind of check in or, or stop off at school? Yeah. If I stop, I also talk to Mrs. Steiner when I stop cause she's always um, checking out to see what we're doing, but I would definitely always visit like Wads and Mrs. Tagey and stuff. So. That's all. So obviously you were into Spanish. <laughs> yeah, I took Spanish um, all four years. I actually graduated trilingual in high school, but I did French too. So. Wow, that's impressive. Now uh, I can't speak it actually. But <laughs> don't don't ask me now. But you're not trilingual. What are you talking don't about? Ask, don't ask me now. I haven't spoken a foreign language in four years. So. <laughs> Who'd you have for French? Uh, Mrs. Keedy, she was awesome. <laughs> All right. We well, when I shared this with Mrs. Keedy, we we won't. We hope she won't be too disappointed at it. <laughs> yeah, I've I've definitely forgotten a lot. Now, when you when you when you said uh, the Tagies, I know the Tagies are always real big on uh, trying to get students to go overseas and take a little gap semester and things like that. Was that something you had considered or thought about, or was it just not, you weren't able to work that in with your. Um, with I went, I went to Greece and Italy last May, um, last May and June. Well, tell us about that. What'd you do? Yeah. Um, so I went on lead abroad, um, which is like, I basically like didn't really need classes. Um, because any of the classes I, I needed were, or any of the classes I could really take there were just electives and I didn't need any more. Um, and so I found this program and it's like kind of a leadership program. So you volunteer while you're there um, as, as well as like get to see the country and whatnot. So it was really cool. So I went to um, Athens, Greece, um, went bungee jumping there, sent the, sent the video to my parents at 5 a.m. My dad had a heart attack. Um, <laughs> um, and then I went to Santorini, um, which was beautiful, and then uh, went to Italy and went to the Amalfi Coast and then Rome. And how long were you there? Uh, three weeks. Cool. Two weeks in Greece and then one week in Italy. So you had a little bit of service project there when you were there as well? You yeah, we, just, we volunteered like around the area because like some of the areas we were in, especially in Greece, were not, um, uh, the people needed some help there, so we helped them out. But, yeah. Great, and I know, and I know you've also gone on some serving trips with your mom. Yeah. Yes, what? I've been to Haiti and Guatemala, and Guatemala was this also this past summer. Um, so they're just medical mission trips, and that's also something I hope to do once I um, become a dentist 
and then I can actually be a lot more helpful than just being like the student. But um, yeah, I definitely want to um, do that too. And, and those trips are my favorite and like they're so life changing every time I go. Um, so yeah, definitely something I want to continue once I become a dentist. So, so tell me about what, what did you do when you went on those trips or what did your mom do and did you assist yeah. her or how'd that go? Yeah, so she's a pediatrician, but she like helps with kind of everything um, and just basically um, assesses people all day and gives, they, we bring a bunch of medicine down and then they give them like um, all the, um, any medicine that we can and, or like we, if it's like, if they think it's really bad, they try, they usually um, especially in Haiti, they have connections with the hospital there. So they will try and refer them to the hospital and try and get them whatever they need. Um, but basically I either help, I either like shadow them or like I've helped, like a lot of them need reading glasses. So I work with a translator and try and help them find the right pair of reading glasses because we'll be, bring a bunch of reading glasses down. Um, I'll like play with the kids and distract them while they're getting checked on because kids hate getting checked on and um or while their parents are getting checked on I'll distract them so I don't know it's fun and I love it and super interesting because and humbling because we you see areas that you do not see um in the U.S. So. yeah no that that's awesome that you've done that and your that your parents have kind of instilled this servant heart in you so that's very cool <laughs> now if you reflect back on um uh, what do you wish you knew going into college that maybe nobody prepared you for? So you're, you're mentoring this next group, these juniors and seniors that are thinking about potentially going away to school. What would you recommend? Um, I would just recommend on like, especially with like tests, like um, study in advance more than you think that you need to, because you're probably going to need to. Um, but honestly, like go and have fun sometimes like it's not it's not all about getting the perfect grades like get good grades and like work hard but like also like care about yourself because like you your this experience is going to go by with like it's so cliche but it's going to go by so fast and you're going to regret if you just sit at home and just study the whole time so like go and have that experience um and make the most of your time time here for sure Great. Did was there someone that kind of took you under their wing when you joined the sorority that was kind of really important to you? Yeah, my big Jordan Franklin. Um, she's awesome, and she's I still talk to her all the time. She's in law school now, so. Well, tell us about Jordan. Where's she from? What what was that uh, relationship like? What's a big mean? <laughs> yeah, she's from Germantown, Tennessee, um, and she's actually um, at. Uh, at law school in Tennessee now. Um, so really proud of her, but she just, um, she was just my big sister. So we, we get assigned with someone, um, you like meet a couple of people and then you pick, pick a little, and then you have a big little reveal. And it's like awesome. Cause she like helped me through things. And like, if I was struggling, like she helped me with it, give me like advice, show me like what was on campus, what I should do, like introduce me to different people in the sorority so yeah she's awesome for sure great and and kind of lastly we, we touched on it a little bit but what was the quarantine like for you what happened how did you react to it you and your friends what you guys do I mean it was hard because so our um spring break was a week later than it usually is so if we would have had it a week earlier we would have been fine um and I know Mika had the same issue as me but we were supposed to go on a cruise this whole cruise that we've had planned for since September um and we were on our way down to Florida um so was Mika he was actually like a 30 minute distance from us like on the road like we were just texting the whole time like is yours canceled is your is ours like whatever and then it got canceled. So that was hard. We were able to still go to my friend's house who lived in um, Florida. Um, because that's before it like really got bad, but cruises had just gotten canceled. Um, and so we were able to spend a couple of days in, uh, or like a week in Florida and then came back here. Um, Cause basically I was like, it looks like it's worse in Illinois. I'm not coming home, mom. <laughs> um, and so then we had that, we had a week off of school and we came back, which was weird because none of us really knew what to do for a week, just chilling. Um, so the nice thing is we've had warm weather. So we kind of just have been able to sit outside a lot. Um, I've been studying for the VAT 
um, but it's been nice that I can study outside and like still get that fresh air without having to go anywhere. So um, it's, it hasn't been awful. It's been weird. Um, I miss going to like restaurants and stuff and we definitely missed out on like a lot of the like last things we wanted to do as seniors, but you know, what are you going to do? I mean, I still, I think I, Probably like with my roommates, we've said I probably spent more quality time together during this quarantine than we ever would have if we would have been doing our normal busy lives. So, and I and I did see from social media you still took advantage of caps and gowns and getting your picture taken in front of the football stadium and all that. So you you seem to have gone through that uh, the same way, right? Yeah, I still got all my grad picks in before shelter in place started, and then shelter in place ended right before. Um, our graduation day and so my friend who's from Auburn her parents came in town um, and they, they helped us graduate the best we could so <laughs> that, that's awesome that's awesome now Alabama apparently is going to try to have a graduation in late July early August is that something you're going to be able to make if they do it or what's kind of your plan yes, in- I'll be moving out then so um, if they end up do if it ends up happening which I don't I don't know if it's actually going to happen. Um, I'm, I'll be there, but if not, then. Now, where have I you can... been? Where have you been living the last couple of years? Um, I live off campus, an apartment. Okay. Yeah. And and have you enjoyed that experience? Yeah, yeah, definitely. It's nice to have my own space and to get away from campus a little bit. So. Great. Now, for me to as I wrap up here. What is one thing that people just do not know about Megan Oska? Oh, what God. is, and I know you're very social and you're out there and maybe there's not too many things that you're a pretty open book, but what's one thing yeah. that maybe only your mom and dad know that? Yeah. Um, oh, that's a, that's a hard one. I would say um, just that that school has not come easy to me, like, especially in college, um, and that it took a lot of hard work and ups and downs for me to get where I am. Um, And definitely, like, going – I was supposed to apply to dental school this past year and ended up just not because I felt like my application wasn't ready. Um, So this this master's program is definitely not the original path that I wanted to take, but – um, I don't know. I've just got, I've got had a lot of ups and downs. So I guess that's something people don't know about me, but, um, and, but I'm really happy to be going to Arizona cause that's where I wanted to end up anyways, uh, uh, for dental school. So that's, so I'm excited. That's terrific. And it shows your, your kind of your heart, your persistence and, uh, and, and I, you know, you know, ultimately just knowing a little bit about you, you would also be like the ultimate event planner. <laughs> Okay, I'll take the I, I have learned that if there's a social occasion, you are usually at the center of planning it and making sure that everyone's <laughs> in line doing what they need to do. Yeah, okay. Well, I'll, I'll do that as my side gig. There you, there you go. So, hey, thank, thank you so much for your time, yeah, Megan. Thank you. You are, you are definitely a, a great example to uh, the class of 2020 and, and to as a PR alum and obviously now as a Crimson Tide alum. So, yeah. wish you nothing but success in the future. Thanks well, for your thank time. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.